and thus we can make use of small angle approximations. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. I hope autofocus didn't jump in. Today we are going to take a look at a pretty wild infinite product um, definition for our boy sine of x. That looks pretty wild, okay, so we have half angles in here, infinitely many stacked after one and another. This is quite wild. We are going to dive right in. Also, don't forget Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And yeah, um, if you have any design suggestions, this right here has been the 2018 or something design or 2019 design. If you have any suggestions, what well, I could put in the shop, for, for example, this heart, this design smaller somewhere here at the heart, basically, then, then feel, feel free to tell me and I could try to bring this into the shop if you're interested in some Valentine's merch. Okay, we are going to dive right in. How would you approach a problem like this? I mean, this already says a lot about the problem in itself. We are going to deal with half angles. Okay, there are trigonometric half angle formulas for sine and cosine, but I'm not certain if they would be useful here. We are going to take a look at something kind of unrelated at the moment. We are going to consider ourselves the sine of two times x, okay? Double angle formulas. Sine of two times x, nothing other than two times the cosine of x times the sine of x. And now you might ask yourself, Baba, how would that even help? Well, I want you guys to consider a little transformation. Why not say that we let x be equal to x over two, then two, and one half would cancel out to be sine of x, exactly what we need right here, what we would need here. But also if we do this transformation, we're going to end up with the cosine of x over two times the sine of x over two. This is the first step to succeed in this problem. We have the first member of this product, cosine of x over two. This is how I approach this problem in the first place. I have even posted my solution on implying we can discuss mathematics if I remember correctly, or maybe it was on actually good math problems. I can't remember. Now, sine of x is the left part of our equivalence relation equals two. Why not use this procedure on the next sign? We are going to preserve our original ex expression that this is going to be the sine of x overall. Now we are going to play around a bit more. Now, if we have this x, I'm going to rewrite this two times the cosine of x over two to the first power. I'm doing this on purpose, times the sine of one half times x. Now we are going to do yet again this transformation. We are going to say that x on this one is x over two. Just to make things a bit more clear, okay, um, there should actually be a two right here then this transformation can stay in equal sign. Okay, so I was just going through it. So if you just take a look at double angle formula, then everything's fine. We are simply at expanding this fraction by two over two, and then we are done. Thank you. Okay, we are going to go through this process again and again. Overall, we are going to get two times the cosine of x over two to the first power times, okay, double angle formula yet again. We want to make use of the double angle formula. Also, we need, um, no, it should be fine. Double angle formula tells us that this is going to be the sine of, um, or two times the cosine, I'm terribly sorry, of x over four in this case, so x over two squared, and then times the sine of x over two squared and so on and so forth. Overall, we are going to get two squared. Okay, um, you shouldn't really put this as an equal sign right here be, because I'm just giving you the idea. We are going to do a little transformation yet again because this x, uh, this is why, why I was confused also, this x is not going to be the same as this x. We are simply going to do the same transformation we did at the beginning once again. Overall, this is going to give us cosine squared, um, two squared times the cosine of x, over two to the first power. Then we have the cosine of x over two squared times the sine of x over two squared. And now 
we can do n iterations of this process again and again and again and again. We are going to do this simply n times. Overall, we are going to end up with, okay, the sine of x is thus. After iterating this half angling n times, okay, on the second iteration we had 2 squared, meaning this is going to give us 2 to the nth power. Then we are going to have the cosine of x over 2 to the first power times the cosine of x over 2 squared times dot 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 up until the cosine of x over 2 to the nth power times the sine of x over 2 to the nth power of 1 over 2 to the nth power times x. I'm going to put it like this. Now, let us move on. This part that we have right here is basically this product that we are striving for. But it's only the partial product, okay? This part right here is simply our partial product from 1 to n. So we are still going to have 2 to the nth power and then sine of 1 over 2 to the nth power times x times our partial product where our k ranges from 1 to n of cosine x over 2 to the kth power. We are nearly there, okay? There's not much we need to do actually. All that's really left to do is to let n go to infinity to get ourselves the infinite product yet again. If we let n go to infinity and everything converges, we can make use of the limit rules to break this up into the limit of this partial sum times the limit of this right here. Limit of the partial sum, okay, is just going to be this infinite product. But what about the limit as n approaches infinity of this part right here? So limit as n approaches infinity of sine 1 over 2 to the n times x times 2 to the nth power. I would like to give you a simple idea how we can proceed from here. If we let n go to infinity and to take a look at sine of 1 over 2 to the nth power. 1 over 2 to the nth power when n goes to infinity is going to get to, to 0 overall. Okay, This is going to go to 0 in the limit. And thus, we can make use of small angle approximation, big O notation, blah, 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 okay, Taylor series stuff. Now, thing is, if we let n go to infinity, then this also goes to infinity. I would like to rewrite this a little bit, because this is the same as saying this is the limit as n approaches infinity of sine of 1 over 2 to the nth power times x over 1 over 2 to the nth power. I'm doing this on purpose, simply because now we have the same argument but with an x up here and this is a famous limit. This is basically going to be just 1 times this other part of the argument. You can justify this more rigorously by saying like I said big O notation so L capital L is simply the limit and we are going to have um, and this is going to give us 1 over 2 to the nth power times x plus O and then 1 over 2 to the nth power um, to the third power, okay, over 1 over 2 to the nth power. Meaning overall, this and that is going to cancel out. When n goes to infinity, all of those o's go to zero and we are going to be left with simply x. Okay, um, you can justify this small angle approximation in the limit more rigorously using Taylor series and big o's. Now, overall, in the limit, sine of x is just sine of x, is independent of n, meaning overall that sine of x is thus in the limit x times our infinite product of those half angle cosines. And this is it. Um, this does the trick. This has been this weird infinite product notation. Maybe there's going to be an annotation on what I did right here to uh, make it a bit more clear for the viewer. Um, I hope I didn't confuse you with those transformations. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if like. If you want to support channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I create or support channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. See ya. <laughs>
Ja. Ja, das siehst du nur, wie ich von Lisa gewirkt.